Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... And how promising. Charles, I am glad to see you. Yours is the first familiar face since I left Paris. Have you seen Paul? I've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, yes, the husband. How is he? That is not the question. It's where is he? Well, the last I heard, he was being the big American newspaper man about Paris. I thought you two were settled there for life, Margot. What happened? He was transferred back home. Where is he? I've been playing catch as catch can with him for days. He took a last-minute assignment and had to fly to London. Now he's supposed to meet me here in Cherbourg. Looks as though he might have missed the boat. Too bad. Charles and John, you're being no help at all. Well, I want to help. Especially if Paul doesn't make it. Ah, oh, cheer up, Margot. You'll probably stumble over him in your stateroom sooner or later. Darling, I'd love to stay, but you must excuse me. Have to unpack my extra tie, you know. Give uh, little boy last my love when you find him. Let's all have dinner tonight, shall we? All right, Charles. I'll tell him if I find him. No, no, nothing. Come in. I'm your steward, Mrs. Sterling. Albert Coons. Uh, your stewardess will unpack for you as soon as we sail. Uh, here are some flowers and a note that came for you. Thank you. Terribly sorry I had to fly to New York on hot assignment. Have a nice trip. See you, Pier 35, Friday. Love, Paul. I like him flying to New York while I'm stuck here on this boat for five days with nothing to do. Your flowers, madam. Mauve asters. They look like a box full of bruises. I'll uh, have to get an extra vase for them, Mrs. Sterling. Oh, no, you won't. There's a lovely one right here. Uh, that'll be all. Thank you, Coons. Yes? Darling, this is Charles. What about Paul? Did he make it? No, he did not make it. What a delightful fellow. The less I see of him, the more I like him. Come have dinner with me tonight. No, not tonight, Charles. I think I'm going to have dinner in my stateroom. You don't tell me you're feeling seasick. I'm not seasick. I'm just tired and depressed. Since that's the case, if I promise to be wildly exciting and interesting, may I come and dine with you right now? No, thank you, Charles. I, I wouldn't be very good company. I don't like your being depressed. I'm very fond of you, you know. Are you, Charles? Are you really? I'm glad someone is. Good night, Charles, dear. Good night, dear. I brought you coffee, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Coons. It was delicious, but I, I wasn't very hungry. Oh, and I, I found these outside your door. Oh, how perfectly lovely. Champagne, 1947, extra dry. And a peach would go nicely with that. Oh, man. yes, that's my favorite. No card? Uh, oh, open it for me, will you, please? Yes, of course. A loaf of bread, a bottle of wine. A jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou beside me in the wilderness. But who 
on earth would be sending me bits of Omar Khayyam? Will that be all, ma'am? Yes, yes, thank you, Colonel. Must be from Charles. Charles, Omar Khayyam. Strange. Still, he did say, I'm very fond of you. But I've never taken him seriously. Well, here's to adventure on the high seas. <clears throat> Lovely brisk day, isn't it? I'm glad you don't mind a little choppy weather. Oh, no. I love the sea. Rough or smooth. So do I. It's in my blood. Of course, my father lived most of his life in Denver, but I did have a great-grandfather on my mother's side whom they tell me was a pirate. <laughs> Sounds very dashing. Does it? <laughs> I must tell that to my wife. Very poor sailor, my wife. Takes to her bed the minute we get on board. And I change from a married man into a bachelor for five days. <laughs> I'm in somewhat of a similar situation myself. Is that so? Then you could say we've slipped our moorings. A, a nautical expression, you know. But in my case, I'm not quite sure who's doing the slipping. <laughs> oh, that's very, very good. <laughs> oh, my dear young lady, I don't know when I've enjoyed meeting anyone so much. I hope you'll let me introduce myself. I should have done it in the beginning, but when you're at sea, of course. <laughs> I uh, have a card here. Oh. I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's perfectly all right. Oh, how do you do? Uh, my name is uh, Slattery. Well, hello. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, oh, where were we? Oh, yes. It's George, you know. George Slattery. Don't bother, Mr. Slattery. I know a pirate when I see one. This has been very pleasant. I... Oh, no, I mean... I beg your pardon. I, uh, oh, oh, yes, well, <laughs> well, this has been quite an adventure. Uh, I feel almost as if I'd walked the plank. movie. No. Four o'clock concert. Eight o'clock horse racing. Dancing in the French room. Starlight roof open. Hello? Darling, it's me again. How's the depression? Oh, Charles, I am glad you called. Ah, depression's over. Say, where have you been? I looked for you all morning. I couldn't find you anywhere. Well, you see... I met a pirate. You do sound better. How about having dinner with me tonight? I'll meet you in the bar at seven. I'd love it. I'm sure we'll have a lot to say to each other. To my favorite heartbreaker. I must say, Charles, you're a great comfort to a girl. Well, I do wish you wouldn't treat me like an old bed sock when it's my ambition to be a Casanova. I've always felt you were kind of an uncle, darling. After all, you have known me since I was five. Well, I should like to remind you that I was, at the time, a tiny tot myself. And you did look cute in that bowler hat. That was a sailor hat. I will never understand why I waste my devotion on such an uncivil woman. Must be true love, I guess. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Like a lean lion looking at a fat rabbit. Oh, don't be silly, darling. I'm just wondering about something. And I don't quite know how to put it. Well, if it's something disagreeable, I would advise you to put it right out of your mind. Mm, this is anything but disagreeable. Mm, very tantalizing. And? Charles. Yes? Do you like Omar Khayyam? <sighs> no. Next? But you know that I like him, don't you? Well, I know you have a taste for limp leather volumes, dry champagne, and chocolates with violet cream in the center. And I've always deplored it. Although I have given into it on occasion. But in spite of that, you do like me, don't you? 
Oh, I think you might call it that without stretching a point. I'm very touched, you know, darling. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. What's all this about? All of a sudden, you're flirting with me. Is that bad? Well, I must say, I find it a little startling after pursuing you for all these years. Oh, come on, Margot. You're not fooling me. Something's happened between you and Paul. Is that it? Would it make any difference if something had happened? It certainly would. You mean, if I weren't married? I'd be running twice as fast. <sighs> oh, Charles. In the opposite direction, that is. Opposite? But didn't you... I mean... Oh, darling, don't look so divinely woebegone or I shall have to marry you and then you will have something to be woebegone about. While you're finishing your drink, I'll go see about our table. But if it wasn't Charles, and it couldn't have been my little pirate, it must be somebody else. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Sterling. Will you be wanting to dine in your cabin this evening? Oh, no, Coons. Pas ce soir. Eh, very well, ma'am. Oh, Coons. Yes, ma'am? Um, do you think you could find out who sent me the gift I received last night? You see, I'd like to thank whoever it was personally. That'd be almost impossible, Mrs. Sterling. It could have come from anywhere, and not seeing who left it, I... Well, I, I, I just wouldn't know where to start. Obviously, someone who admires you tremendously. Oh, thank you, Coons. I'll ring you later if I need you. and a toy bear. Yes. How does the poem go? I'll give you brooches and toys for your delight. A bird song at morning and starshine at night. Oh, it's enchanting. But who? Yes, Mrs. Sterling, this is the operator. I have a call for you. Would you hold on a moment, please? Oh, yes. Yes, I will. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry, Mrs. Sterling. The gentleman was cut off. Was it Mr. St. John or Mr. Slattery or Mr. He didn't give me any name, Mrs. Sterling. But can't you trace the call? Surely on a ship it should be easy enough. I'm sorry. The call was made from one of the telephones in the main lodge, Mrs. Sterling. But I'm sure if you'll be patient, he'll call right back. Be patient. Margo, dear, this is Richard Rawlinson. Richard Rawlinson? Margo? Uh, oh, yes, Richard. I am glad to hear from you. I wanted to ask you if you'd dine with me this evening in the French restaurant, if you like. Uh, oh, what did you say, Richard? I simply asked you if you'd like to dine with me this evening. Oh, yes, I'd be delighted to. Fine. About eight in the French room, then. That'll be lovely, Richard. Well, of course, I've always thought of Richard as a kind of garrulous godfather. But then look what I thought of Charles. And Richard is rich enough for the brooch and sentimental enough for the poetry. <laughs> Come to think of it, he does look rather like a teddy bear. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. Hope I haven't kept you waiting. Not at all, not at all. There's nothing more pleasant than to sit quietly in the shade of a bartender, gazing at the serene horizon of one's cocktail glass. Waiting for someone to rise and shine over the edge of it, I suppose. Exactly. <laughs> well, Margo, what a pleasure it is to see you. Thank you. Waiter, 
champagne cocktail from there. Is that what you'd like, Margot? Perfect. Then I can play Horizons, too. And see who comes over the edge of mine. Much more fun than looking for people in tea leaves. Oh, yes. In my extensive experience, you're very unlikely to find a handsome dish in uh, chiffon and pearls in a homely dish like a teacup. You've always been one of the most beautiful, Margot. Richard, have you taken up palmistry, too? In your case, yes. And I see a great change coming into your life. Lovely dress, lovely pearls. And uh, what about that brooch? Yes, Richard, what about that brooch? I can't possibly keep it, you know. Uh, really? Why not? Oh, darling, it must have cost a fortune. And as much as I like that poem, I'll give you brooches and toys for your delight. Ah, of uh, birdsong at morning and... Uh, and stars shine at night. I see you know your Stevenson, Margot. Yes, but it's my Rawlinson I'm not quite so sure of. <laughs> well, now, there's nothing I enjoy more than being a man of mystery. Oh, Richard, don't tease me. I'm having entirely too much trouble with men in the last few days, beginning with Paul. Who? Paul, my husband. Oh, yes, uh, whatever happened to him? He didn't come. <laughs> well, that's husband for you. Now, my advice is to throw the rest of them overboard and concentrate on me for the remainder of the trip. Because of the brooch? The brooch? Why? Do you think I'm attracted by your great wealth or something? You mean you didn't give me the brooch and all the other presents? Margot, you're a conversational antelope. But the teddy bear, the wine, the omakayam. You're a lot more mysterious than I am. Now, um, what exactly has been going on? Richard, get me another glass of champagne. No, a bottle and a crystal ball. If I keep this up, it may ruin my character. I'm beginning to look at every man on this boat like Margot the Manhunter. would know it's my birthday. <laughs> it's ridiculous and lovely. I wish, I wish, I wish I knew. I saw you the first day out. Of course, I immediately looked you up at the passenger list. Did you really? And when I found you were going to dine at the captain's table tonight, I managed to rearrange the place card. So you'd be next to me. But I was next to the captain. I must remember next time not to underrate the British Navy. <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. Never mind. Tell me about yourself. Are you as romantic as you make me feel? Are you a spy or a movie star? Or perhaps a princess in disguise? Well, naturally, I'm a famous movie star. And in my spare time, I pry military secrets from handsome men with whom I have delightful romances and then cast them aside like an old glove. And here am I, eager and free to play the part of the old glove. Yes, I feel the cold hand of fate upon us. How ridiculous you are. It's all your fault. To look into your eyes, it's like staring into a pool of cognac. Golden and bee brown and shining. And if I fall in, I'm going to get awfully drunk. Sober up, Mr. Da Costa. You really shouldn't do this, you know. But how can I help myself? I'm enveloped in a wild feeling of gala. Birthday, confettis, balloons. Birthdays and balloons? Then it was you. 
But how could you have known? You are as full of riddles as the Sphinx. And I don't know the answer to any of them. Oh, come now. You can't play the man of mystery all evening. Your secret is out. And I thank you here and now for your beautiful gift. My gift? Hmm. Did you adore it? I was enchanted. And uh, you were amused? Enormously. And flattered and mystified? Utterly. Then it obviously follows that you are mad about me. Can't resist me. And are, in fact, putting in my hands. Oh, so beautiful. And all gift wrapped up in a moonlight night. Now that we are practically down to your batteries, I think you'd better tell me what the present was. What do you mean? You're joking. I wish I were. I... You mean you didn't send me the cake? Cake? And the candle? Candle? And the balloons? Is that what it was? I could have done better. Who was it then? And what are you doing making love to me if you didn't send them? When a woman has a face like yours, Every possible excuse for making love is crowded between brow and chin. No man needs more. But it was such a romantic idea. Who could it be then? Is it so important? Cake and balloons? Anyone might do as much for the nasty little child next door. Oh, come, let's go back in and dance. And if you were a mysterious admirer should appear, I shall challenge him to a duel. I give up. Sterling? Well, I see you're all packed. We've already picked up the pilot boat. Be docking in about an hour. I uh, do hope you enjoyed your trip, ma'am. Coons. Yes, ma'am. This pillow. It's, it's very pretty, ma'am. Shall I pack it for you? Coons. Yes, ma'am. What were you doing in here this morning? Uh, this morning? In, in here? Why, I, I, I... The jig's up, Coons. I was wide awake. I knew it wouldn't work. I told him so from the very first. You told who? Why, it must have cost him a fortune. And me, lurking about, hiding in closets. Why, I felt like nothing more than a common sneak thief. Oh, I can tell you, ma'am, I'm very glad it's all over. Well, I'm very glad you're glad, Coons. But I'm not glad as yet. Do you mind telling me who it was? Who do you think? <sighs> oh, darling. Well, what a fool I've been. But who else could it have been? All my favorite things. The champagne and the poems. <laughs> Idiot. I've had a lovely trip. Somebody made love to me all the way across. Do you know something? I fell in love with him all over again. Darling, poor. 